On today's show, we're going to talk about the investment potential within the Canadian financial sector. My name is Candice, and we will start right now. The Canadian financial sector is one of my favorite sectors as they look to be poised for solid growth in 2022. The big six Canadian banks ended 2021 with a significant boost to their dividends and planned buybacks that bode well for investors. Surely this is a good thing and a sign of smooth sailing ahead. Maybe not, as there could be a few bumps in the road. The Fitch ratings have provided a neutral outlook on the Canadian banks. They expect some moderate deterioration in their financial profiles based on a slowdown in Canada's economic growth. Canada's economy is expected to grow by 3.7% compared to the 5% of last year. Mark Naron from Fitch said the post-pandemic recovery will likely extend well into 2022, contributing to healthy earnings from lower provisions, supportive investment banking conditions, and recovering credit demand. Over the long term, we expect a moderately weaker operating environment compared to the pre-pandemic period, characterized by elevated private and public sector leverage and a more vulnerable housing market. Other risks to the sector include new flavors of the illness, continued impacts of inflation and supply chain issues, and the proposed 3% surtax on banks who have profits over $1 billion. The banks are going to weather all of the potential bumps just fine, and despite any concerns, are still going to perform well for investors. The big six banks are, after all, blue chip dividend stocks. Now, let's take a look at some of the opportunities we have within the financial sector. We will start with the big six. If you are a blue chip dividend investor, these are awesome stocks to have in your portfolio. First up is the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Their ticker is CM. They have a good price to earnings or PE ratio of 11.40. They have a quarterly dividend yield of 4.051%. Their shares are a little high, coming in at $159 at the time of this recording. Their shares can be bought fractionally on Wealthsimple. Up next, we have the Royal Bank of Canada. Their ticker is RY. They have a good PE of 12.90. They have a quarterly dividend of 3.352%. Their shares come in at $143 at the time of recording. <laughs> you can also buy them fractionally on Wealth Simple. We have the Bank of Montreal up next. Their ticker is BMO. They have a good PE of 12.40. They have a quarterly dividend yield of 3.687%. Their shares are priced at $143, so luckily they too are on Wealthsimple in a fractional form. That takes us to Toronto Dominion Bank. Their ticker is TD. They have a good PE of 12.90. They have a quarterly dividend yield of 3.553%. Their shares come in at $100, and you got it. They can be bought fractionally on Wealthsimple. Next up is the National Bank of Canada. Their ticker is NA. They have a good PE of 11.10. They have a quarterly dividend yield of 3.471%. Their shares come in at $100. And yes, the broken record says they can be bought fractionally on Wealth Simple. Our last of the big six is the Bank of Nova Scotia. Their ticker is BNS. They have a good PE of 11.70. They have a quarterly dividend yield of 4.428%. At the time of this recording, their shares came in at $91. They as well can also be bought fractionally on Wealthsimple. I promise I will not mention fractional shares on Wealthsimple again in this video. Those are the blue chip top six. There are, of course, other non-top six banks, such as, well, Laurentian Bank of Canada, ticker of LB. They show why they are not blue chip when you look at their P.E. ratio of 43.10, a little high. They also have a quarterly dividend of 4.007%. Now, they are cheaper at $44 per share. However, in this case, I would be inclined to stay blue chip for that extra stability when the yield is really just so close. So, yes, we have been looking at some small yields so far. What if we want to see more zest in our financial investing? And by zest, you guys know I mean greater returns. Let's look at some options. 
we will start with Life and Bank Split Core Class A shares with a ticker of LBS. This is a mutual fund company that invests in common shares of Canadian banks and life insurance companies. They have a monthly dividend with a yield of 11.019%, which is fantastic. They do not have a PE, which is a small alarm bell for me. Any company providing an almost too good to be true dividend, you want to invest with caution. There can be extra risk with split core stocks. Up next, we have Brompton Bank Split Core, Class A shares with a ticker of SBC. This is also a mutual fund company investing in the Canadian banks. They have a monthly dividend with a yield of 8.766%. They are more than likely more sustainable as they have a PE of 1.80. Smaller dividend than the previous stock, but a wee less risk, which is not a bad thing. Of course, if you want the best of both worlds, more stability and a higher dividend, then there is Financial 15 Split Core Class A shares. They have a ticker of FTN. They are invested in 15 financial services in both the Canadian and American financial sectors. They have a monthly dividend with a yield of 12.612%. They have a good PE of 1.60, a strong dividend and a great yield, still a split core, so worth paying attention to, but one I have more faith in. Another top performer in the sector is dividend 15 split core two class A shares. They have a ticker of DF. They are also a mutual fund company with a heavy investment in large cap Canadian companies, mostly in the financial sector with a few holdings in the energy sector. They have a monthly dividend with a yield of 18.634%. Holy banana bread. Wow. They have a good PE of 2.10%. When a dividend yield is this high, it really doesn't matter how good their fundamentals are or are not. You need to remain cautious. Another group of ETFs popular in the financial sector are some of the BMO covered call ones. There is always risk with covered call ETFs, but the BMO ones have been managed very well, and that has helped to minimize that risk. We will look first at BMO Covered Call U.S. Bank's ETF with a ticker of ZWK. They invest in U.S. banks and use covered calls to help maximize the return for investors. They have a monthly dividend with a yield of 6.453%. They have a good PE of 11.50, a strong dividend and a good stability tempered with a wee bit of covered call risk. There is also the BMO Covered Call Canadian Banks ETF with a ticker of ZWB. They invest in Canadian banks and use covered calls to help maximize the return for investors. They have a monthly dividend with a yield of 5.409%. They also have a good PE of 11.50. Once again, a good dividend with a little bit of stability and that wee bit of a covered call risk. While we are looking at BMO, here is a different one that could add an international flavor to your portfolio, and that is the BMO Europe High Dividend Covered Call ETF with a ticker of ZWP. They invest in European assets across multiple sectors, with the financial sector only making up 14%. They also use covered calls to help maximize the return for investors. They have a monthly dividend with a yield of 6.485%. They also have a good PE of 14.90, a rather good dividend and some stability tempered with a wee bit of covered call risk. It's also kind of nice to have exposure to Europe. Hopefully this has given you a few places to research within the financial sector. As always, I am not a financial advisor, so I am the beginning of your research and the financial advisor is the end. I will be adding exclusive videos and content to my Patreon for you guys as a reward for those who would like to support the channel. The link is down below. Of course, the best way to support us for free is to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, join our Facebook group to take the discussion to the next level. Oh, and one last thing. I will be rolling out some banana-themed channel merch very soon, so watch out for that. Thank you for dropping by. And until next time, I bid you a fond adieu.